the ambition of SpaceX and the people that I grew to, to know and care for there gave me a deeper understanding of why they're doing what they're doing. These are people who care deeply about the future of humanity. There may only be four people aboard Inspiration4, but in many ways, they represent the other seven and a half billion of us. Because if they can go, we all can go. I always wanted to do this. When I was a kid, I either wanted to be Steven Spielberg or Bob Costas. I wanted to make movies or I wanted to be a sportscaster. I started working in sports production out of college. So it was kind of a, a mashup of those two things and just, you know, kind of fell in love with documentaries and, and the process of making a documentary. On April 1st, I got a call from Gabe Spitzer, who's a, an exec at Netflix, and he was my PA at HBO uh, back in the day. He said, check this story out. What do you think? And within a few minutes, we were finishing each other's sentences, saying that this should be a, a real-time doc. We should be following these people as it happens so that when the launch, the mission, and the landing occur, people should see a documentary about this a week later. So we were off and running. Netflix had, and Time Studios had cameras rolling from January on when this mission first started. I think they didn't know exactly what it was project was going to look like, but they did want to capture as much as they could. It was a collaborative effort and, and we were lucky enough that uh, people had done a great job in the months prior to our involvement. Uh, so we were able to incorporate the necessary images to tell the story. SpaceX was, was incredibly cooperative and collaborative in making this doc. They understood the story that we were trying to tell. And I think that just like any other doc, it's, it's a matter of slowly gaining the trust of your subject. Without their cooperation and their rapid feedback, we would not have been able to get this show on the air as quickly as we did. Four civilians are going to space. They will orbit the Earth for three days on their own. You know my dream of always wanting to go to space. I wanted to let you know that I got selected. <laughs> On most documentaries, you try to, to build a virtual wall between you and the subject because you're trying to uh, maintain a level of journalistic integrity when you're telling a story. This was a different process because these people, we were dealing with quite literally life and death. So when these people invite us into their homes, they let us quite literally into their bedrooms when they are about to you know, go on a extremely high risk mission. One of the coolest moments of my, not just my career, but my life was when we, they came back to Kennedy Space Center after they splashed down. And when we arrived there, someone walked up to me and I rolled down the, my window. This person handed me four phones. And those four phones were the phones that were in space, you know, two hours before. And we started sifting through these images and no one had ever seen 4K images shot from 585 kilometers up, ever. We were the first humans to ever watch this footage. So it was jaw-dropping, stunning. We felt so much gratitude that that was a moment that will stick with me forever. Before this project, like a lot of people, I thought that this was just billionaires playing in space. The ambition of SpaceX and the people that I grew to, to know and care for there gave me a deeper understanding of why they're doing what they're doing there. These are people who care deeply about the future of humanity. And it sounds trite to say, but this is quite literally what they do care passionately about. So it was a privilege to, to be inside those walls and, and to actually get to know the, the, the faces and the names and, and the personalities involved.